Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. In today's segment, we will talk about mudaaf. This is another category of uh, irregular verbs. And just to quickly summarize the different categories, we've talked about mahmuz, which means that there is a hamza in one of the locations. It could be the first, second, or third. So that's mahmuz. We've talked about misal. which is where one of the harf e illats so either a waw or a ya shows up in the fa location today we will talk about mudaf where a letter is repeated so dalla is an example where lam shows up twice here are some examples salati mujarrad examples and I'm not going to go over each of these words, but this is useful vocabulary. All these words show up in the Quran. Shakka means to doubt, and even in Urdu, the word shak comes from here. Masa means to touch, and when we say do masa, that's coming from here. Madda means to extend, and when we say alif madda, that means alif that is extended. Dalla. This means to be lost or to be astray. So, vala tolin are those who are lost or astray. Sadda means to divert. Vada to wish. Gharra ya gharu means to deceive. Qarra uh, this the Urdu word qarar means to settle somewhere. So, qarra remain means to remain settle. And then there are several over here also. the key point being that once you see these words hopefully they will look somewhat familiar because uh, if you read the quran frequently these words should um, should uh, look familiar and if not familiar when you see them in the future they will be hopefully uh, somewhat familiar okay then moving to some salati mujarrad uh, so those who are salati mujarrad then mazid fi and i'm also going to just keep testing you because this material i've taken from the dream textbook where the babs are named based on family 2 family 3 4 etc can you tell me which bab this looks like so khaffafa you khaffafu takhfifan what does this sound like sarrafa you sarrifu excellent good job sarrafa you sarrifu tasrifan allama you allimu ta'lim so this is bab e taf'il right so family two Abit. is bab e taf'il khaf sarrafa yusarrifu tasrif uh so bab e taf'il okay and very quickly so this means khaffafa even khafif those whose urdu is good so khafif means light so khaffafa means to lighten okay family three shaqqa yushaqqu means to dispute and then there are two masters shiqaqan and mushaqatun uh, mushaqqa so notice there is a shadda on the qaf and pretty soon we'll talk about the rules and then all this will make more sense but what does this family three look like the faala um uh, Yeah, this is the qatala. So qatala, you qatilu, and then there are two masters, muqatalatan and qitalan, right? So qatala, you qatilu, and then qitalan and muqatalatan. So this is babe mufaala. Okay, family three. Then family four is babe ifal. adayu iddu so akrama yukrimu then family 5 tashaqqaqa ya tashaqqaqu so this is tafaala so that's bab tafaul do you remember the example of this taqabbala ya taqabbalu taqabbulan so taqabbulan so that's bab tafaul with the shadda on the ain letter we'll see examples of all this 
Then we have family six, Kamasa, family eight, Inshaka, Yanshaku. This is Infatara, Yanfatiru, Infitaran. And as we do this, one reason for doing this is it's a revision of your Babs. Hopefully, you go back and keep looking at the Babs. And when you read the Quran, you also try and sort of decode which Bab a given verb is associated with. Is Tarra Yat Tarru is Tirarun. So, Ishtadda uh, Yashtaddu, this is Babe Ifti'al, the Ta in the middle. And just by the way, uh, we've not covered this yet, and I think in this course we might not have a chance, but I'll just let you know so that so that you have a sense for, you know, when I talk about the many rules that we've not talked about, when you have a heavy letter such as Da, sometimes if there is actually a ta next to it, that ta, that light ta gets replaced by a ta. So that's what's happening here. This is babe isti'al, which means we should have a ta over here, as you see with all the other letters. But that, that ta, the light sound, is being replaced by a heavy sound ta, because before it, we have a heavy sound ta. Okay, if you understood that well and good, if you didn't understand it, just think of it as an advanced topic. And then family 10 is, is, is uh, yeah, this is istansara, istansiru, istansaran, or istaghfara, istaghfiru, istaghfaran. So here we have istazalla, istazillu, istizalan. All right, so just some additional vocabulary that I'd like you to learn. Now let's move towards a discussion on mudaf. Recall that a word is considered mudaf when the second and third root letters are the same. So you have the far letter, the ayn letter, and the lam letter. So there is a given far letter. The ayn and the lam letters are the same. When two of the same letters come together, the letters fuse. So basically, these two letters are combined into one using a shadda. So the Shadda is used to represent the fusion or the sort of coming together of the two letters. All Sarf families are affected by this fusion. The families are all the Babs are affected by this fusion, except for the two Shadda families. So what are the two Shadda families? From our example, the that's... and Tafa'ala. Yeah, exactly. So Sarrafa. You tasrifan. So, or over here they they use uh, the dream textbook uses allama as their example. So allama you allimu ta'liman. So that's yeah. why is that a shadda? Part of the shadda family because the ayn letter has a shadda. And they say tafarraqa. And what example did we use? Taqabbala. Taqabbala ya taqabbalu taqabulan. So those are the two shadda families because the ayn letter has a Shadda. The point being made here is that with these two Shadda Babs or families, there is uh, no fusion that takes place, and we will see what the verbs look like in these scenarios. Okay, so we are going to talk about the Mazid fi families first, and then we'll talk about the Mujarrad families. When it comes to Mazidfi families or Babs, the second and, two and third root letters fuse in all families except for the two Shadda families. So, Allama or Farraha. Sarrafa. And, and the next family, which is Tafarraqa, which is in our example, Taqabbala ya Taqabbalu Taqabbulan. So, in these two families, there is no fusion. In all other families, the fusion behaves the same way. So this actually makes our life easy because there is only one key rule to remember. And I'm going to highlight that rule and show you examples throughout. Okay. There is this other important terminology that's used in the dream text textbook. And it's actually used across many different Arabic uh, grammar books, which is sarf as-saghir. Sarf as-saghir basically means that we are taking the first sigha or the first word in all these different girdans or conjugations. 
so when we talk about fail madi we will take the first fail madi so we might take daraba then we will take the first siga or the first word in fail mudare so yadribu then we'll take the masdar then we'll take the first uh, mazi majhul then we'll take mudare majhul so in sarfe saghir we take a given root such as let's say da ra ba and then create this conjugation or string of words where each word or siga is coming from a different girdan so madi and then mudare and then masdar then madi majhul uh, uh, madi majhul mudare majhul masdar and so on we'll see examples of this so when we talk about sarf e sahir it's what i just said sarf e kabir is to actually run the full conjugation for a given uh, scenario so we might say fail madi the sarf e kabir would be daraba daraba darabu darabat darabata darabna so this is what we've learned so all the conjugations that we started learning those were sarf e kabir um so just giving you this terminology because we see that terminology in the dream textbook and we also see it in other books okay so when so it comes so i have the word the uh, the word sarf means uh, explanation right to explain literally actually sarf has many meanings uh, in the context of uh, you know what we are talking about one meaning of sarf is to you know uh, sarfu means to explain over and over sarf mm-hmm. also means to sort of keep rotating and changing uh so when we say ilmo sarf in arabic this is the whole science of taking a word and changing its form and then the different meanings that are associated with the different forms so mm-hmm. the most basic meaning of sarf is to sort of change or rotate the the morphology of the the word. morphology exactly so in english we'll say morphology in arabic we'll say ilmo sarf okay like even tasrif ur riya tasrif ur riya riya is winds so the sort wind. of the changing, yeah, the changing of winds. the winds yeah. right so sarf is a very um, it's it's a word with many shades uh, you know the meaning it's a very rich word in in urdu we'll say wasi ul maane okay got it thank you so when it comes to sarf e saghir of the mudaf 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 means where the second and third root letters are the same so we need to remember the following two rules of which the first rule is crucial the second rule just applies to fail amr and nahi which is the negative mm-hmm. command but uh, if nothing else i want you to take this rule and sort of embed it when lots of rules are thrown at you you need to recognize okay this is a rule that applies almost always and 90% of the time so make sure you remember that and the other rule you should know that it exists so you can come and refer to it but the first rule i want you to memorize this rule is that the second and third root letters fuse and a shadda is used to represent the fusion okay there are two families that are exempted and those two families were family 2 and in family 2 this was the sarrafa family so sarrafa so sarrafa you sarrafu tasrifan so khaffafa what are the root letters here kha fa and fa so if we put kha fa fa in the sarrafa form it becomes khaffafa khaffafa so mm-hmm. we use the exact same rule with khaffafa that we use with sarrafa or allama right no difference mm-hmm. so there are no changes to family 3 even though it is a mudaf scenario in other words fa gets repeated what is the, Arasa, that's because the fusion is already happening right so sort of the like, we already have a shadda in there right that's right, why right. the mudaf rules uh, apply everywhere except for the shadda families and with shadda in right. a sense a fusion is already happening so we can't fuse any further right okay now Achha, tell Arasa, me ye, bole uh, mukha, i have a question ye fahwa means what I'll get, okay, I'll, I'll get to that very shortly. That's a very good question. What we are looking at here is a sarfe kabir, a sarfe sagir, and I'll, yeah. I'll just get to that. 
मुझे ये सो टेल मी सर रफा व्हाट्स द प्रेजेंट टेंस फेल मुदारिफ और सर रफा यू सर रफू एग्जैक्टली यू सर रफू यू सर रफू सो इफ द रूट लेटर्स आर खा फा फा व्हाट शुड द मुदारे बी यू खफफू यू खफफू यू सर रफू यू खफफू so this is you have to this is just another way of writing it so when you put a kasra underneath the shadda that means this is a kasra when it's over that means it's a fatha so one benefit of my using the dream textbook is i'm showing you things that are actually quite commonly used across arabic textbooks so this is a little different from our quran academy textbook but having this exposure will make it easier for you to read other arabic books So I hope you get it. Sarrafa, you sarrifu. Khaffafa, you khaffifu. This is no different from what we've discussed earlier. It's just a quick revision. Okay. What's takhfifan? Sarrafa, you sarrifu. Tasrifan. So what's takhfifan? Takhfifan. Maybe it's it is masdar. Exactly. Takhfifan. Exactly. It's the masdar. It's the name of this action. So you know it's a masdar. It has reduced. So takhfifan. so this is the master so you have the madi madi maloom in the sense that the file is known this is mudare maloom this is the master fa huwa mukhaffafun fa means so huwa he he right. mukhaffafun this is the fa'il so this is just the way sarf e saghir is memorized so we go fail madi khaffafa fail mudare you khaffifu master takhfifan fa huwa mukhaffafun fa huwa we so it's basically sort of a prefix to the file first so who are he he being the one who does this action the one who does this action is called a mukhaffif remember when we talked about ismul file with um mazid fi what did we say we said that uh, the present tense indicator or the mudare indicator is replaced by what a mim 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 pesh mim zamma and what happens to the ain letter zair uh, uh, like that's a, a kasra, kasra right that's exactly what's happening here mukhaffifun okay so mukhaffifun is the the file or the uh, the entity that is doing this action okay So uh, Aziz Sab, did that answer your question? So Fahua just tells you that what's coming next is the doer. Yes, a mukhafafa. So so he and so he he being the person who does all this is the mukhafifun. Okay. Acha, sir, mukhafifun me is me kasra yaha nahi diya wa. Aapne pronounce mukhafifu kiya na? This is kasra. So where faaki? This is kasra. Below the shadda means it's a kasra. Acha, kasra. Mukhafifun. Yeah, fine. In many Arabic textbooks, it, you know it's a kasra when it comes below the shadda. Like here in khafafa, the indication is above the tashdid. So this is khafafa. Uh, you khafifu, mu khafifun. So if it's below yeah. the tashdid, that means it's a kasra. Okay, what's this? khuffifa majul majul exactly so this mm -hmm. is with this whole majul this is the first sigha or the first in the whole majul mm -hmm. girdan this is the mazi first majul. in the mazi maloom this was the first sigha in the fail mudare this was the first sigha that is simply the master and then in the fail this is the first sigha so we are not giving the dual and the plural and the female and all that and the reason for doing this tarfe sahir is you might recall that with all these different conjugations the biggest challenge is coming up with the first one once you get the first one right then often the rest just flow therefore when we learn arabic first we learn how to do all the sarfe kabir and then when we learn a new word or a new rule we do the sarf e kabir so that we can learn the first word or the first sigha in all these different girdans or all these different conjugations okay so this 
this row is the majhul row is the majhul row khuffifa yukhaffafu so this is majhul mudare or mudare majhul takhfifan the masdar is the same regardless of whether we are maloom or majhul do you understand when i say maloom versus majhul majhul means yeah. the file is not known or, or hidden yeah. maloom means the file is maloom or known and then fa huwa mukhaffafun so uh, aziz sahab can you tell me what mukhaffafun means mukhaffafun so so he this the masdar masdar no no sir maful maful this is this is a maful on whom maful, since we are yes. talking about majhul the fa huwa ah, will be the person maful. on whom the action is happening so this will be ismul maful so these kafir oh, sagir are very logical the first row is the maloom therefore the, the second row is passive yeah exactly first row is sort of the active second row is the passive therefore this is the uh this is the ismul maful and then khaffaf what is khaffif what's this that's the command, command. positive yeah this command. is the command or amr la tukhaffif negative command negative, negative. command this is called nahi mukhaffafun this is uh, the ismul zar exactly okay so just uh, so anyway uh, so this was actually more of a revision of material we've seen earlier because yeah. there are no really mudaf rules here the mudaf rules kick just in a yeah question arif sir yeah go ahead the ismul zarf and the uh, the uh, ismul maful are the same exactly and from context we'll figure out whether we are talking about the maful and this will happen quite a lot you will okay. see several scenarios where different words in the sarqa sagir sagir are the same and then from context when we start reading arabic books from context we'll have to figure out whether we are talking about a maful or a zarf okay okay family 3 shaqa so you shaqu shiqaqan wa mushaqatan so this is um which bab is this fa fa ala yeah ala exactly so this is the our example was ka ala qatala fa ala qatala you qatilu you qatilu and then the two masters were a uh, qitalan and muqatala okay so those were the two masters fa huwa mushaqun so shaqa means to dispute fa huwa mushaqun is one who disputes okay now here the fact that this is a mudaf is going to create some changes qatala the ta and the lam are different but with shaqa the ain letter and the lam letter are both qaf so since the ain letter and the qaf letter are both uh, qaf or, or the lam letter are both qaf these two are going to fuse together using the shadda shadda so this becomes shaqa the rule being applied here is the following so the rule being applied here is that the second and third root letters fuse so qaf and qaf fuse together and we get shaqa the same thing is happening with mudari you shaqu and then the masdar is shiqaqan in the masdar since we have an alif in the middle so if we look at um, uh, so shiqaqan wa mushaqatan so uh, so since we have the alif in the middle these two get separated but where the, uh, there's nothing in the middle the two are uh, merging together <laughs> no this one was, actually the master is qita not qat qitalan okay <coughs> all 
All right. So then I'm actually just going to focus on the top row because if you haven't revised your material, this will look difficult. <laughs> this, what's this row over here? Do you remember? This is the majhul. Yeah. So this means that you need majhul. to remember the rules for how the majhul is created. With the mm -hmm. majhul, there is a dhamma, dhamma and then you get a... After the dhamma, we have a vow. So I'm just going to skip this. But if you want to be diligent, what you can do is for this family, family three, which is qatala uh, yuqatilu yuqatilun, Okay. So, for this family, you can go look at how the majhul is created and then you will see how this makes sense. But what's the most important rule for mudaf? It is that the second and third root letters will fuse together using a shatta. And I want you to remember this example here. Shaqa yushaku shikakan. All right. So, this is family three. Then... In these slides, you just have the other rules. So there are three versions of the Nahi and Amr. I'll just say this once for this particular family. And then what I say here will apply for subsequent families also. So this was the row that corresponded to fail Amr, which is the command. And then negative commands. So when we have Mazid Fi and we have Mudaf, there are three ways in which a command can be given. So, shaka, shaki, and shakik. So, the first takes a patha. So, shaka. The second method takes a kasra, shaki. And the third follows the regular pattern of amr, which would be shakik. So, if we were to take the regular family three form, the way we create a command is we remove the uh, we remove the mudare indicator and we start from here and we then make it majzoom. So shakik. And here again, if you go back and review material from fail amr for mazid fi, and then you come back to this lesson, you will see that this particular amr follows exactly the same pattern that we've discussed earlier. So what's the new thing over here? The new thing is that we can also create two new ways of giving a command. And one method is this, and the other method is over here. All right. If this is too much to retain, what's the central point? The central point I'll keep saying is this one. The second and third root letters will fuse. So the most important row over here is the first row. Shaka yushaku shikakan. And Dr. Ghani, notice over here. A shark yeah, comes yeah, what shark come in? It means to dispute. To dispute, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, this comes quite often in the Quran. So, people who dispute, people who argue. So, shark. Okay. And here also notice that there are several overlapping sihas or words. And then, like, ismal fail, maful, zarf, they all look the same. So, fail, maful, and then the. The zarf all look the same from context when we read books, then we'll have to figure out which particular meaning to use. Okay, family four. Um, can you tell me what family this is? What Bab this is? Anyone? Akala. Exactly. Akala. Akrama, Yukrimu, Ikraman, Babe, Ifal. Akrama, Yukrimu, Ikraman. So, do you notice the central rule applies over here? Ahabba means to love. Ahabba yuhibbu ihbaban fahuwa muhib. Or fahuwa muhibbun. So, notice the merging happening over here. This is the mazi malum. This is the mudare malum. This is ahbaban. This is the master. Fahuwa muhibbun. So, Aziza, what does muhibbun mean? Muhibbun um, uh, file. File. So one who loves. Yeah, okay. File. And then Muhibba. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, there's a question. Like uh, the Habba, the ha he has a uh, uh, fata on it as well. Akrama doesn't have. 
but but on the golf right yeah so so the the thing over here if we say uh and you know with these that's why they are irregular verbs because some things change so akrama now if the root letters are uh ha ba ba so just let's put this together alif ha ba and another ba so if we were to follow exactly the same pattern then we would end up with a akrama ah, baba yeah ah baba but the way the arabs have changed that around ah baba doesn't sound very nice so yeah. this gets converted ah, to ahabba ah, all right when the last two are sort of uh, like if you have a shadda then the previous letter must have a harkat do you get what i'm saying so if the if the first rule applies in the sense that uh, can you hear me you lost our itself okay. okay am i back ha gaya yes sir ji yes okay theek so um i'm not sure whether you caught this or not so if we are saying that these two bars uh, merge and we have a shadda the letter before must have a harkat on it right we can't have a sukun which is what we have in akrama the letter previously yeah. must have a harkat so mm. so we put a fatha on it so that's why this becomes a habda all right we couldn't possibly have a sukun followed by a shadda that would make no sense then it would just become abba right so <laughs> you can't even pronounce that actually exactly so wherever <laughs> the arabs can't pronounce and they just change the rule right pronunciation smooth pronunciation is like almost the golden rule of the arabic language it's like french i guess okay so ahabba means so ahabba is the first letter ahabba yuhibbu ihbaban in my opinion once you have a general sense for the rule then the best thing to do is just learn these examples just like you just learned akrama yukrimo ikraman without thinking too much about the rules similarly you learn that okay ahabba yuhibbu ihbaban fa huwa muhibbun and then majhul would be uhibba yuhabbu ihbaban fa huwa muhabbun what does muhabbun mean the one who is loved the one the one who is maful maful exactly the one who is yeah. loved and then what are these three these are three ways of giving a command so ahibba ahibbi ahbib so there are three ways of giving a command these are the three ways of giving a negative command okay then family 5 this is another shadda family or a shadda bab the fa ala sorry ala yeah uh, quick question when you go to family 4 uh, there's a mohabbin at the in the last line yeah this is zarf can you go uh, okay that's just zarf mohabbun is zarf and again uh, this and this are the same and from context okay. we have to figure out whether we are talking about the a maful or a zarf okay got it thanks so it's all you know the 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 beloved you know and then time and place the all sort of same word yeah taaddada yataaddadu taaddudan so i won't spend time on this this is a uh, taqabbala yataqabbalu taqabbulan babe tafaul here there is um, no impact of having a mudaf so so there are no changes in family five all the rules are exactly the same as regular verbs okay family 
ہمزا So this is Taqabala Yataqabalu And what's the master? Anyone? Taqabala So Taqabala Yataqabalu Taqabulan. Taqabulan. Okay. So this is Babe Tafa'ul. All right. Here again, notice that. So now let's just take Taqabala. What are the root letters over here? Ah, Be. Hey, Jim. Ha, Jim, Jim. Exactly. Hey, ha, Jim, Jim, Jim. Jim. So. The ta will remain, obviously, right? That's part of the mazid fee. So ta, and then instead of, the, instead of the qaf, we will get ha. And then the alif is a mazid. So ta ha. And then the ba, ba lam becomes ja ja. So ta ha ja. Do you see what's happening? The, these two are simply merging and we get the shadda. Shadda. In Mudare, we have Yatahaju. Anyone knows what this means? Haj- yeah, I was going to ask you the same thing. This argue. word, I don't know. Haj- uh, uh, to argue. Okay. That was Shaka. Okay, that was also to dispute. Okay. Okay. So the vocabulary is given in the beginning. We can just quickly go family six. Just, I'll just confirm. Yeah, Haja wasn't there, by the way. I, I checked. Oh, Haja uh, is not there. Okay, I'm pretty sure it needs to argue, but I'll double I check. I don't see it. Okay, so, so I think, I remember in the Quran, the one who argued with Ibrahim, alayhi salam, for man Haja. I'm pretty sure it means to argue. Okay. Mm-hmm. Haja, the Haja. So again, as far as our rules are concerned, the main one is the second and third root letters fuse. And uh, Shadda, is used. All right, that's the key thing I want you to remember. Next, family seven. This is, uh, can you, do you remember what family this is? What's our example? In Fatara or Sorry, In Fatara, uh, Yan Fatiru, In Fitaran. In mm-hmm. Fatara, Yan Fatiru. So again, the same rule, the Qaf. So In Shakka, Yan Shakku, In Shikakan, Fahua. Munshakun. So this is um, the same rule. The second and third root letters fuse. As far as the command is concerned, we have three forms. Negative command, three forms. And here also the Zarf Munshakun and the Ismal file are the same. So the difference will be determined. آپ کو یاد ہے باب انفیال I just mm-hmm. think that's... I accept yeah. the in shakka, for example. This is coming from the root word uh, sheen kaf kaf, right? Exactly. And we also did the sh- uh, uh, shakka, for example. So these will all have different variations in their meanings, right? Uh, in shakka would have probably something related to disputing, but maybe not exactly disputing, right? Yeah. I think in shakka means to split. But you're right. So they'll have some commonality, but not exactly the same. 
Yeah, here the module is not given. Is there any particular reason? Uh, okay, very good. I, I was going to ask you. Do you? Yeah, we, yeah this this uh, verb was a uh, uh, passive. Uh, no, itself, close. right? Infatara is to explode ourselves. Uh, this to is split ourselves, came, for example. Yeah, yeah, you're on the right track, but let's make it very clear. There are some words. So, do you remember lazim versus mutaaddi, transitive versus intransitive? There are some verbs. Which don't take a, a object. So, for example, standing. Right. So, I am standing, or I am sitting. So, verbs that don't take an object can't have a majhul. Hmm. Right. So, if a verb cannot take an object, then it doesn't make sense to have a majhul form because when there is no object. Then how can an action be done on somebody else? So if there is no hmm. object and there is no doer, then there is no action, right? So this is uh, in English we say this is a transitive verb. In Arabic or Urdu we'd say fele lazim. So with fele lazim there is no majhul and there is no maful. Okay. So but the main point here again has to do with the fusion. Of the ain letter and the lam letter. Okay, then this is babe ishtaal. Ihtaza yahtazu ihtizazan fahua muhtaz. So here again, the same merging is happening. And then family ten istakarra yastakiru istikraran. Again, the Ra is merging at the end with the command. We have three different forms. Nahi, we have three different forms. Mustaqarun. Here, the the zarf is the same as the maful. Okay, all these things. Obviously, there is a lot to remember, but the key point has to do with the fusion at the end. And which are, which are the only two barbs where the fusion doesn't happen? It is ala and tatafa. Yeah, it is the two shadda families four. like the sarrafa, you sarrifu to three fun, and taqabbala. Taqabbala ya taqabbalu, taqabbulan. Okay, the two shadda families. Okay, sarful kabir. So. Everything we've discussed so far is related to sarfe sahir, which means that we were only looking at the first siga. Now the following rules apply to all families uh, where the fusion occurs. In other words, it does not apply to the two shadda families. In the past tense, the shadda is undone at the hunna onwards, and then the two like root letters separate. So, what does this mean? So, if we take uh, Babe Ifal, so Akrama, so Akrama Madi, and we take Asarra, where we have the Ra. So, the point being made here: this is our third person masculine, third person feminine. So, Asarra, so Akrama, Akrama. What's this Akrama or Asarra? Dual. Dual. Dual, and then what's this asarru? Plural, plural. plural. Male third person. Exactly, male third person, male uh, plural. Okay, so this is this is sarfe kabir. So this is you see the merging taking place. What is asarrat? Third person female yeah. singular. Third person female. Asarrata. This is third person female. Uh, dual. Dual. dual, and dual. then uh, asrarna. So this is third person yeah. female plural. Uh, plural. So notice, uh, if this were akrama, and I were to ask you, okay, convert akrama into plural third person female, what would you say? You would say akramna. akramna. Okay, and over here, all these grey shaded areas. Are saying that now with the grey shaded area, this looks exactly the same as the regular form. 
So after the third person female plural, which is the Hunna version, why is this called the Hunna version? Because Hunna represents what? Female, uh, female plural. Female. Pre, yeah, female, female plural, plural, third person. Third person. Right. So after Hunna, everything else then is just regular. Do you get that? So when we talk about fail Mazi, mm -hmm. the first one, two, three, four, five sighas are different in 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 Muda, in, in this uh, Muzaf. But then starting with the Hunna version, after that, it's exactly the same. There is no difference between regular and irregular. Okay. Then we have fail Mudare. Is this Sarfe Sagir or Sarfe Kabir for Mudare? Kabir. This is all of them. Kabir. It's all of them. Yeah. All right. So literally, you can imagine this. You know, I'm just taking a step back. And, you know, as this course is coming to an end, we are combining all these concepts. So literally, you can think of Sarfe Sagir where each letter in surface of air can then be taken out and the whole conjugation is created based on each surface of air. So literally in, in surface of air, if you have whatever about seven, eight letters and then each letter from that you create 14. So just do the multiplication and think about how many words are created just from a given root letter. Okay, you sirru. So here we are in, uh, uh, we are doing fail mudare. So yusirru, yusirrani, yusirruna. Are we merging over here? So this is a merging, this is fusion, this is fusion, yeah. yusirru, yusirrani. With fail mudare, there are only two places where the merging doesn't happen. And these are the two female plural places. So what's this yus yusirna? This is this is third, third person, person female, female plural. plural. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. what's Tusrirna? This is also second person second, female plural. Second. Yeah, second third person uh, female plural. All right. So these are the only two places where we separate out the fa letter, uh, the ein letter and the lam letter. In all other places, the merging happens. All right. So this also is a revision of your basic uh, Sarfe Kabir for Mazi and Mudare. Okay. Coming now to Mujarrad. Sarfe Sagir with Mujarrad. So Mudaf, Mujarrad, Sarfe Sagir. So now we are going to focus on the uh, Falasi Mujarrad. The entire discussion up till now was on Mazid fee. But now we are coming to Salati Mujarrad. The first two rules are the same. The second and third root letters fuse and a Shadda is used to represent the fusion. And then there are three versions of the command and the negative command. So these rules are the same. But then there are two new rules. Each Mazi letter or word looks the same regardless of the clan. The clan in the dream textbook, clan refers to the different barbs within Mujarrat. So, uh, Fataha, uh, like Daraba, Yadribu, Karuma, Yakrumu. So, all those are different barbs. In Salati Mujarrat, the dream textbook re refers to these different Salati Mujarrat barbs as clans. And Mazid Fi barbs are referred to as families. So, they all follow the pattern Falla. Okay, so in the past tense, it's always falla, and we'll see examples. Whereas in the modare, the haraka that goes on the second letter, so daraba yadribu, the second letter has a kasra, fataha yaftahu, the second letter has has a fata, uh, daraba yadribu, second letter kasra, karama yakrumu, a nasara, yansuru, second letter has a dhamma. So the point here is that whatever is on the second letter is transferred to the first root letter. Okay, so what does that mean? 
سو غر یا غر غر تن فہو غارون سو واٹس ہیپننگ اوور ہیئر غر یا غر غر تن سو ان دا پاسٹ غین کا نقطہ تو نہیں ہے تو ازا So, whatever goes on the second root letter is transferred to the first root letter. So, here we are talking about the Daraba clan. So, in the Daraba clan, what does the second root letter have? So, in the Daraba, Yad Ribu. Yad Ribu. Kasra. So, Yad Ribu. So, the second root letter has a Kasra. So mm-hmm. that's why, uh, so what is on the Ayn now? A Kasra. Kasra, okay. So the first letter gets that. Yeah, the first root A letter, first which root is letter. the Ayn. The Ya is simply mm-hmm. the Madare indicator, right? So the Madare mm-hmm. indicator with our Ma'loom will always have a Fatha. So mm-hmm. what does the Ayn have? The Ayn will have the same thing that, mm-hmm. you know, like Yadribu, Ra is a Kasra. So that comes over here. And then is is Zan Fahua Azun. Okay. So let's just focus on this one. Okay, then Nasara clan. So Nasara, uh, what is the what is the Madare? Yan Suru. Okay. Yan Suru. Yan, so. Yan Suru. Okay. So here we have the root letters Sheen, Kaf, Kaf. So the Mazi is easy. It is mm-hmm. Falla, so Shakka. And then Yashukku. How do you know that we have a Dhamma yeah. over here? Because it's of the, the first letter gets that. It's the, yeah, it's so the Nasara the, clan. So the Nasara yeah. clan will have the Dhamma. So Yashukku. And then Shukka. Yushakku. So anyway, let's just focus on this first one. If you can just remember all the ma'looms, you're in good shape. Okay, then Bab Fataha. The Mazi Masa. This is simple. And then here, notice yes. the meme has a Fatta. So, Yamasu. All right, this yeah. is Fatta because in Bab Fataha, we have Fataha Yaftahu. Yaftahu. All right. And then Samia. What uh, in Bab Samia? What does the what does the fail Mudare look like? Yes, Ma'u. Yes, it has a yes, Ma'u. A it has a fatha, so that's why we have a fatha, and in the end we have it merging. The past tense looks simple. That's just in the form falla. So here it becomes uh, zolla. Zolla. Okay. Yes. All right. So Sarfe Kabir. The same Sarfe Kabir, Kabir rules apply that apply to Mazid fi families. Uh, so same apply here that apply to Mazid fi also apply to Mujarrad. Mujarrad. So what did we say with Mazi earlier? We said that once we hit Hunna, after that it's the same as. Uh, so this is a nice revision of your very first verb conjugation. So in your very first verb conjugation. If you remember, uh, so for example, if you did, uh, do, do you remember the conjugation for Fataha? So yeah, Fataha, fat, no, eh, Mazi. Fataha, Fataha, oh, sorry, Fatahu, Fatahat, Fatahata, Fatahna, uh-huh. and then Fatahta, Fatahtuma, Fatahtum, Fatahti, Fatahtuma, Fatah. Tunna, fatahtu, fatahna. 
so this was the mazi conjugation with uh, with what we are discussing here mudaf only the first five sigas have the merging and then after that it's the same as our regular fataha okay so that's this case and with mudare same idea only the female plurals have this decoupling so in the female plural the kaf and the kaf is separated in all other cases the ain letter and the lam letter is merged together using the shabd okay and this is a majhul example i'll just uh, same idea applies with majhul with mazi the after the hunna it's the same as regular verbs and with modare majhul we have only the female plural ones where the ain letter and lam letter is separated okay uh i'll just say this briefly i know that these okay, can you hear me yes okay so we've covered yes, a lot exactly. of a, yes. lo a lot of uh, material but in a way this is also a recap do you remember one of the things we've talked about in uh, fail mudare is sometimes uh, as in the default will fail mudare is when you have a a dhamma at the end so for example we say uh, yad ri bu but sometimes we say yad ri ba when do we say yad ri ba yeah. when there is something before that makes this yeah. mansub right so right. lan yad ri ba for example mm -hmm. so so lan yad ri ba would be most certainly uh, he will not hit right so with lan this becomes uh, mansub or if we have lam then what did it become jar yad ri ba not jar it would be mansub. oh sorry uh, jazam jazam sorry jazam, jazam. lam yad ri okay so in this dream textbook this form is referred to as light mansub is light and majzum is the lightest okay just but they've also given the form that we've studied so the question now is if we in this yushakka yashukka so if we want to make it majzum what do we do and the answer is that the same rules apply so with faala ends in dhamma that becomes uh, fatha if the the verb ends in a noon we get rid of the noon so this is actually nothing new all we are saying is that in mansub form the dhamma becomes a uh, fatha and wherever there is a noon so over here there was normally a noon that gets dropped so this is hopefully you recognize that this is no different from what we studied now just to check your memory now what would happen in the majzum form same thing same not the, exactly what's the subtle difference not exactly but yeah uh, what's the difference with majzum actually earlier we said that the dhamma in the regular form the dhamma gets replaced by a sukun but here the dhamma uh you know ends there are three versions uh, so this part where the noon gets dropped is actually mm -hmm. yes. is the same so the noon gets same. dropped and the noon gets dropped but here there is a slight yeah. complication so earlier with regular verbs it's simple you just get a sukun but here actually mm -hmm. just like with nahi we have three forms yashukka yashukki yashkuk so all three forms are possible slightly confusing i'd not get too hung up on this this is the form that you are used to where you have a sukun in the end but in in certain circumstances you can also mm -hmm. have the 
other scenarios. I would not get too hung up on this. All right. I will actually stop here because I think enough has been covered. <laughs> I will, you know, just two, three main points. I'll, I'll recap. The most important point is that with Mazid fee, in all the babs, except for the Shadda babs, the Ain and Lam are fused together using the Shadda. So keep that in mind. And then in the Mazid fee, uh, so that was Mazid fee. And then in Salati Mujarrad, what's the key point to remember? In Salasi Mujarrad, they are actually two key points. Uh, you know, the first two points are the same as Mazid fee. With Madi, it takes the form Falla. And with Mudare, whatever Harkat, Fatta, Kasra, Dhamma we have on the second root letter, that gets transferred to the first. All right. So that is it with respect to this particular illat, which is called Mudaf. And I hope that you are feeling fine at the end of this lecture. Right. At, at I feel least, a little lightheaded right yeah, now. Feel, I'm tired. <laughs> but at least you know that this thing exists, right? So yes. now, yeah. so when and there are so many words like dalla, zalla, marra. Now, now they'll, whenever you see a verb where you see fusion at the end, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. And then you can come back and look at the rules from here, and over time this will sink in, if you make an effort.